Hello everyone, welcome to episode 7 of the Visible Mending Workshop presented by the Davenport Public Library. This week we'll be talking about reverse applique, which can create some really interesting graphic patterns. With reverse applique, you place your patchy material behind the area you are mending, then turn the edge of the fabric under as you stitch. You can either go bold and graphic like this with a visible whip stitch or buttonhole stitch and contrasting thread, or you can use matching fabric and thread for a subtle mend. Once again, our inspiration is from Arona Connor Raj and her Visible Mending book. You can see here how she made the reverse applique patches bold with a high contrast thread. Patching like this can be a piece of art all on its own. Here are some examples of uh, reverse applique and some variations. This is what I've shown you already. I did on my original drawstring bag, and I just used a simple whip stitch. Here's another uh, oval where I tucked the edges under and then just used a simple running stitch, similar to Sashiko stitching. And then with this one, I cut a square and then I used a buttonhole stitch around the edge. It makes a real pretty decorative uh, edging, I think. Here are the materials you'll need today. You need fabric shears and thread snips. You're going to need some thread, and this is kind of up to your personal choice. You can go with embroidery floss. You can use your Sashiko thread. These will both make pretty uh, bold, strong contrasting patches. Uh, if you want something a little more subtle, you'll need some sewing thread that matches your patch and your uh, fabric. You also need some needles and choose whatever is appropriate for the thread that you're using. A marking pen or pencil can be very helpful. Um, I'm going to use a Frickson pen that helps me um, draw out the patches that I'm going to be making. And then, of course, you're going to need some fabric for your patches. You can go colorful and bold or subtle. You can even experiment with fabric that has some pattern in it. Okay, let's get started. First of all, I'm going to cut a shape in my sampler fabric here. Um, of course, if you're working on a garment with a hole, like a pair of jeans, you want to clean up the edges and any loose threads that are around it. So I'm just going to um, draw the shapes with my Frickson pin. And my recommendation here is don't go too big because by the time you cut away your fabric, your center here, and then um, cut your hem, fold your hem under, you're going to have a um, pretty good size hole already. So I'm going to do a series here of small ones. Next, I'm going to cut out the fabric in the center of these little squares that I just drew. It's always a little scary to cut those holes. It's kind of, you're committed now, you have to go with this. So I've got my holes cut. Now, you don't have to draw a little hemline around the edge, but it's kind of helpful. So a generous quarter inch, maybe even a little bigger, makes it easier to turn uh, the fabric under. Now I'm using a Frickson pen, like I said, so the, these lines will iron away. If you're using a regular pen or a pencil, be sure and tuck your hem under uh, far enough so that that line doesn't show because pen, regular pen and pencil will not disappear. It will still be visible. And then the next step, uh, step is going to be cutting, cutting your curves. Or in the case of these boxes, I'm gonna cut this uh, these corners right here um, and on the curve you're going to want to cut pretty much all the way around maybe every half inch 
um, so that when you turn it under, it lies smoothly. So you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut a line here. Don't cut over your, um, your hemline that you just drew. And if you didn't draw, just kind of estimate so that your, um, your cuts are about the same size. Of course, you can always... I'm going to pause here for a minute and think about what kind of fabric I'm going to use for behind my holes here that I just cut. Um, here's some pink that's real pretty. Um, of course, use what you have on hand. Um, here's some, this is just a, all of these that I'm using are just a quilting cotton. That's kind of pretty. This has a little bit of a pattern. Um, but I think I'm going to go with this one, which is just these random polka dots. That's going to be real fun. And I'm going to use white sashiko thread um, to stitch around them. Okay, now it's time to uh, turn the edges of your fabric under. And iron is really helpful right here, but you can also finger press it. As you're stitching, you're probably going to need to use your needle to kind of encourage that fabric to roll under smoothly. And then once you have your edges um, turned under, you can put your patch fabric behind the hole and you're ready to get stitching. Okay, you can see here, I've got most of my patches done. I've got one last one to stitch up. I'm gonna give you a real quick demo on how I do a buttonhole stitch here. So I've got a piece of Sashiko thread and it's already knotted and I'm gonna bring it up on the inside of the uh, patch, close to the hemline, which I've turned under, I'm gonna bring it out. I'm gonna make a stitch down. Now you'll see here, I call these rays. I'm not sure that that's the stitch. You can, I tried to keep them pretty similar. You can vary the length of them, but this first stitch I'm going is kind of be the basis of what I'm gonna work on. And I'm gonna bring my, so I'm gonna bring my needle down. It's about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bigger. I'm going to bring it back up on the inside right next to where I just um, started the thread. So, and the needle is on the left side of the thread. So you see, here's the thread. And then I brought it up here. And then I brought it back up, brought it being the needle, back up right next to where I first went in. And I'm going to, the needle's on this side and the thread's on this side. So I'm going to bring it up and pull it through. So you've got a straight stitch. That's your kind of your establishing uh, base stitch. And then you keep stitching. Um, again, you can vary the width between the stitches and the length of the stitches. You can make them all similar. I was thinking while I was stitching this, it would be fun to uh, maybe do a round patch with yellow thread behind it or yellow fabric behind it and then stitch around it with uh, long stitches with yellow thread, make it look like a sun, or you could make it look like a flower. And you could let your imagination run wild. So you just, oops, bring your needle down on the outside, bring it back up, just on the other side of the hem of the patch, with your thread behind the needle and pull it through. That, that gives you that nice um, line here along the top.
Okay, when you come all the way back around, take your last stitch, bring it up like you have been, and pull it tight without over, don't be too tight. I keep your tension even. And then I'm going to put my needle on the other side of this original foundation stitch that we put in so that you have a nice continuous line for the top of your buttons, buttonhole. It's also often called a blanket stitch. And there you go. All done. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and were inspired to try it yourself. We would love to see what you create. So if you have an Instagram account and you post a picture, please include the tag DPL Visible Mending. DPL stands for Davenport Public Library. And tag us at our Instagram account, which is Davenport Library. If you have questions or suggestions, you can email me at ahetzler at davenportlibrary.com. I hope you'll join us again next week when we'll be finishing up our Visible Mending Workshop by stitching together a drawstring bag using the sampler pieces that we've been working on over the last several weeks. Until then, happy stitching. Mm -hmm.